Welcome to the Engineering Update. I'm Casey Panetta, Managing Editor of ECN. And in this week's episode, the fastest production motorcycle in the world, guarding against the zombie apocalypse, and medical implants the size of a rice grain. The Lightning LS218 is set to be the fastest motorcycle on the planet. With a top speed of 218 miles per hour, 200 horsepower, and 168 foot-pounds of torque, this bike is set to blow its competitors out of the water after it's released in the summer. It weighs in at 495 pounds with a direct drive system with battery options that vary from 12 to 20 kilowatt hours. Did I not mention it's an electric bike? With an IPM liquid-cooled 150 kilowatt plus 10,500 RPM electric motor. While 218 and Lightning LS218 pays homage to the bike's top speed, the Lightning references the claim that it takes 30 minutes to top up on a quick charger. It has all sorts of add-on goodies, including a carbon fiber frame to reduce weight or a fully programmable Android touchscreen dashboard. But the standard bike offers top-of-the-line shocks, wheels, and brakes. If you're interested, keep an eye out for the US release. They're built to order for a cool $38,888. You probably suspected that the Pentagon has a plan for every possible contingency, and you'd be right. But you probably didn't know that the DoD's extensive list of what-if scenarios includes a zombie apocalypse. A DoD document titled Counter Zombie Dominance actually exists, and the authors assure the public that the plan wasn't designed as a joke, even if a zombie apocalypse probably won't happen anywhere outside of Hollywood. The DoD routinely utilizes fictional training scenarios to test the mettle of young trainees. But when some of these scenarios go public, say our plans for invading China, it creates massive political fallout that's more trouble than any acquired benefits. So the DoD chose to reference what they deem a completely impossible scenario that could never ever be mistaken as a real plan, much to the chagrin of horror nuts and survivalists worldwide. And with tongue firmly planted in cheek, the DoD dives headlong into the apocalypse with the matter-of-fact observation that zombies are horribly dangerous to all human life, and zombie infections have the potential to seriously undermine national security and economic activities that sustain our way of life. Of course, this means that having a population is not composed of zombies or at risk from their malign influence is vital to US and allied national interests, which you have to imagine would be true. Unless you think the DoD hasn't done its homework, the document includes a threat summary which mentions pathogenic zombies, radiation zombies, evil magic zombies, and yes, even space zombies, which is a huge relief, what with our future plans to travel to Mars and all. If you're looking for a good laugh and sound military strategy, I'd highly recommend you check out the DoD's counter zombie dominance plan, which should be linked to in the description below. As the medical world embraces increasing amounts of implantable devices as solutions to long-standing medical problems as well as for monitoring health, power has become a reoccurring problem. Not only is the battery generally the largest and therefore most restrictive part of an implantable device, recharging batteries limits where and how deeply the devices can be implanted, which in turn makes them less effective. But researchers at Stanford University may have come up with a way to solve all the power problems with one device. But first, a little background. Traditionally, wireless implants are charged via near-field waves, which is a type of electromagnetic wave capable of avoiding the interaction with biological tissue. The downside is that near-field waves are not capable of reaching very small devices that are deeply implanted in the body, which is the optimal location for certain implantables. Another option is far-field waves, which can travel further but interact poorly with the body. For a long time, it was believed that these were the only two types, but researchers have discovered a sweet spot between near and far field waves called the midfield. Utilizing midfield waves allows researchers to reduce the size of implantable device to the size of a grain of rice that can be implanted anywhere in the body and safely powered. The size of the batteries is the last real barrier to total miniaturization of medical devices, and with this technology, that's no longer an issue. It really opens up potential applications for implants in the brain or heart, as well as implants that stimulate nerves or deliver drugs. They could be used to treat Parkinson's, epilepsy, depression, and a host of other medical problems. That's all for this week's episode. Be sure to check us out on Twitter and Facebook and see past episodes at ecnmag.com. For the ECN channel, I'm Casey Panetta, and this has been your Engineering Update.